Welcome guys, so this will be my 17th Phyrexia Quick Draft, I believe. I will just get it started. Alright, we have, uh, this is interesting, this is a Mythic Rare from a previous set that happens to be a Phyrexian. So, Urabrask, so I can just check. And it's very nice, I have three out of four, so I will just go ahead and draft my fourth copy of this guy. Uh, now what does Urabrask really mean? You get to, you get an X, you get an extra draw every turn, but in the form of something being exiled off the top. I think Urabrask, uh, should be top of the curve in that case. I don't think we want to draw, do try try for Oxida finisher here because if it's something's uncastable off the top, it's um, not going to be ideal. And you, it forces your opponent's draw face to uh, forces them to exile off the top. Um, but no sort of uh, big synergy I would say with any of the decks in uh, Phyrexia all will be one maybe you could make a haste deck a red green haste deck uh, right scheming aspirant I don't think we're doing proliferate um, I think yeah the finisher might be a bit too big Silver battle chair is quite big as well. Makes a six six trample. I, I, I want to make this this card work at some point. And now red white would potentially be the uh, equipment deck. So we've got charge of the mites there, which is an it's an okay removal spell. But you often I feel I just can't keep enough creatures on the board to make the most out out of this. Um, and then there's kind of the forbidden color combination in, in one, which is black and red. We, we could take the best card here, which is Anoint with Affliction, and try and make a a, a, a working black-red deck. It's because there's no toxic in red, and there's quite a lot of toxic in black. So it's sort of half a strategy. Um... Shock Splitter. Okay. Maybe we do it. Maybe we tr we try and make Black Red work. I'm going to go for Anoint with Affliction. Oh, well. See, there's an Annex Sentry, which is uh, which is a really amazingly good card. So I don't think our dalliance with red black is going to last very long here. Um, we could go ravenous necrotitan. But yeah, annex first five cards. Let's just pick the best card and then and then see where we are. Right, another monument to perfection. I have completed my set of these cards. We'll really try not to go into a fourth color, I think. Um, hmm. Tyranax Atrocity down there is quite tempting. Furnace Punisher, quite aggressive, I suppose. 3-3 three, three Menace for 3. We could just go for good stats. Good, good cards with good stats. Uh, yeah, maybe Furnace Punish is a decent, just a decent block of stats. Exuberant Fusling, that's quite interesting. Another Charge of the Mites. 
That's just blast. Uh, I'm going to take another charge of the lights. Oh, no, it's my first one, actually. Okay, we've got a cacophony scamp. So that can work well with pump spells or equipment to boost his power up. The Raptor's quite good. But we might not be playing much Toxic. I think uh I think I want to try and make the scamp work. I think I like Axiom Engraver. So we'll go for it. But if we've got three power creatures, maybe Ribskiff is worth a shot here. Never been that impressed with it, but. Uh, it does draw a card, it replaces itself. Let's let's go for the Ribskiff. See what we can do. Okay, we've got the Aspirant. Centurion. Dune Mover. Dune Mover's a two drop. We need we need more two drops, I think. Okay, so so the splitter is a thing here. Let's forget about black. Another splitter. Okay, I think. Axiom Engraver. Another five drop with with haste. We've got quite a few three drops. I think I can take a five drop. Hazardous blast, sure. Oh, that's nice. So we get a a decent um, three drop. We've also got hex gold slash. That's sort of what we'd be giving up on. We um, I do can have four copies of this guy. I think uh, we, we we like. I think a three three for three is pretty good in this deck, so I'm gonna take it. And we get we get twenty extra gems for picking that guy, so that's something. Oh, jawbone duelist, that's good. Yeah, let's take that. Maybe we could go mono red. Okay, there's another good removal in black. Yeah. And we've only got three white cards as well. But Sonic Sentry is really good. The red cards are not good here. There's one white card and that's not good. I think, yeah, just, just take Drowning Nicker here. Ah, good old Mirren Safehouse, yeah. 
could have completed that twice over, I think, in drafts. It's very unpopular with the AI bots, with good reason. Okay, we could go, right, Magmatic Sprinter would kind of switch on oil strategies for us. I think that would be a very good idea. Let's take that. Okay, so Godwood's Helms or the Sword Base Camp. Let's get another artifact thing. All the artifact things seem to. Well, all of my cards at the moment are costing three. We'll take a gold wood and sell. Why not? So we definitely uh, we have got some good artifact cards. We could try against all odds. That seems like good value if I've got equipment. Chimney Rabble's a good card as well, but I think, yeah, let's give that a shot. Okay, Exuberant Fusling. I want to try the, the fuse link. Okay, blazing crescendo. I would be very scared about exiling Urabrask off the top. But maybe we should go for it. We're in pack two. So yeah, plated onslaught. This looks like a plated onslaught deck. Let's go for that. Um, Thermorphic Expanse or a free 20 gems. I think we'll take our 20 gems. Okay, Mind Splice Apparatus. I think that's one I don't have yet. And uh, you can see, uh, yeah, I, I just noticed the Hex God Slash. So it is, it is costing me a bit drafting these rares. But let's, let's take that. Okay, this deck is missing two drops, really. I like an infested flesh cutter. That's, that's a good card. Size of glider. Or a molten rebuke. Okay, let's let's try a flesh cutter. Hmm. Oh, Vika. Yep, yeah, I am red rafting that. Wonder if I could splash for a Vika. Okay, another fuseling. But we're an equipment deck, aren't we? We're at equipment and artifacts and things. What are all these four drop things? Volshock splitters, that's right. I'm happy with the three drop slot there. I think I think the three drops 
slots are completed there. Got Chimmy Rab Rabble, but which everyone loves, but um, Orthodoxy Enforcer could work in this deck. We've got seven artifacts. 4-4 four, four Vigilance. I've never never tried it before, but I think it could be good. Okay. Malkator. Let's grab that guy. Sure. Mind Splice Apparatus number two. Why not? It's a pretty good haul. So if you have five rares I didn't have. Oh yeah, the hover wings are absolutely key. We'll take the hover wings. Our Justicia would be nice because it is a two drop. Um, yeah, we'll take this guy for the two drop. Take a skull bomb. Right, this is a ramp card. I think that's pretty good. We could take another orthodoxy enforcer. Okay, I think uh, the converts pretty good. Sure. Ended up quite quite a few blue cards. So we'll just think for a second, what kind of deck are we? So that makes instances and sorceries cheaper. That's about it. Okay, we've got a few cards to uh, try and cut out of here. So, I think we're not an oil deck. We could, maybe, maybe we drop an engraver. Maybe we drop Blazing Crescendo as well. And. I guess shrapnel sling is an artifact, which we've got one artifact payoff. We've got the orthodoxy enforcer. We might want to keep that. Ah, uh, drop him. A magmatic sprinter can add oil to things, but yeah, we haven't really got a great. Oil payoff. It would. It works with the uh, fuseling. I think we drop the sprinter. So this, I'd be surprised if this deck does well. This feels like another zero three. We don't really have any removal, apart from Annex Century. One charge of the whites. We've got to go for the plated onslaught win. Build up a board and then. Uh, attack for a surprising amount of damage, I suppose. Uh, 
yeah, I think I'll call that end of part one and have a little think about that. Uh, thanks for watching so far. And I'm back. Uh, so, I've made a few changes to the deck. I've decided, first of all, I can go down to 16 lands. Uh, and I've, I've dropped one of the five drops. I've dropped Furnace Strider. So actually you can see I've dropped most of the... I, I don't, I'm not running most of the oil cards. I think I'm only running the Axiom Engraver just because that's that can be early fixing. And really I wanted to... I wanted another two drops, so I've got that all-important seven uh, two drops, basically. Uh, there were a few interesting options I was considering. I was, I was thinking, well, maybe I should splash black for these two good removal cards. But uh, my fixing is basically Dune Mover and Mere Convert. And I'd, you know, throw a swamp in, and that would be three sources. I could throw two swamps in, and that'd be four sources. But then I'd have to go down to maybe... Um, seven planes and I just didn't like those options it's like it's not enough black sources really I don't want to eat into my main colors um, for for two removal two cheap removal spells uh, I don't know if that's the right decision I mean you know this is realistically this is how I kill a Glissa Sun Slayer on turn three I have to be a bit lucky and get the right mana but um I don't have many options against Glissa Sun Slayer. I've got Annex Sentry. Um, just fingers crossed we don't run into that card again. Uh, the other option, I could actually splash blue for a Vika quite easily. It is a 7 drop. I'd probably want to play 17 lands if I was running this. Uh, arguably, I could even try playing Malkator Purity Overseer. But that's, that's a 3 drop that needs blue, so... You probably wouldn't be playing playing that on curve. It's quite mean as well that to get the payoff here, you've got to play three artifacts. Yeah, you've got to have three artifacts enter the battlefield um, to get the three three. I thought maybe two artifacts would be a bit would be more reasonable, but I suppose yeah, maybe that. Um, but it means it's very hard to trigger that in draft. So it's more of a maybe more of a constructed card, but um, yeah, I don't think so. I don't think we splash for this. But it is four four of stats for three mana. Yeah, um, but yeah, that's that would be yeah that would be the blue splash plan is to get these interesting creatures. Um, what I've decided to do. Um, I want to run cacophony scamp. Because I've got a few things that pump creatures. I've got Skull Bomb um, and Blazing Crescendo. And I've got all of the... Uh, I've got Volshock Splitters that pump power. Uh, as well as... Oh yeah, uh, um, Plated Onslaught as well. So I want to see if I can um, get some value out of this guy. Um of course, pumping power goes well with double strikers, so I've got a jawbone duelist. So that sort of makes sense. The flesh cutter that pumps two power by two. Um, uh, I've got kind of a reasonable curve. I've had to, yeah, as I say, I've just built up the two drops to seven. So hopefully, you know, we can play stuff out early and then go for a plated onslaught, turn four or five and maybe get a quick win. Or maybe later on if things really if the board gets really gummed up, we can win with a hazardous blast just to, um stop my opponent from blocking. So those are just sort of uh that two paths to victory there. Uh and I guess yeah, mere convert actually ramps you. It's uh it's basically a, a mana dude. So you could get a turn four Urabrask as well, which probably could be pretty disruptive and pretty dangerous, I'm thinking. Um, I'm going to try this uh, against all odds, so this can just give me value. I can bring a three-drop creature back, so I'm, think I'm thinking Annex Sentry would be the best target for that. It's very likely to get blown up. 
assuming it's not been exiled. Um, and also you can blink an artifact or creature, which would be potentially also good with Annex Sentry or if it, you know, if it's take if it doesn't have anything underneath it, or if, or a um, one of my artifacts, one of my um, four Mirrodin equipments can make a new, another token. So that looks like that could that could be a source of value. Uh, I think I can get away with sixteen land just because I've got June Mover and Mere Convert. Also, Basilica Skull Bombs potentially drawing a card in an emergency. Uh, Blazing Crescendo's exiling a card in an emergency, so I may, hopefully I can get to three land. All right. Um, I do have one five drop, which well, a couple of five drops with the plated onslaught. Maybe it's a bit greedy. Uh, I'm not quite sure about Ribskiff, but it is another artifact um, for my Orthodoxy Enforcer. And I do have quite a few... Th I've got a few three power creatures. I've got the Iron Goblin, I've got the Furnace Punisher to uh, to crew it. It's not a lot of three, drop creature, three power creatures, but we've got ways of pumping power as well. Um... Not that you'd want to use that for crewing, but yeah. We we might have to tap two creatures to crew it. It'll be easier if we get at Hex Gold Hover Wings as well. That pumps all equipped creatures, so that's pretty cool. And I, Whenever I'm trying to make these equipment decks, I very rarely see Hex Gold Hover Wings. But we, got, we got it this time. We didn't get any of the 3-1 um, the two-drop um, equipment creature. That was missing. I think it, because I, I think the bots love drafting that card. They 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 quite like um, Boros aggro drafts. So it has made made it a bit hard to get a good Boros aggro deck recently. We'll see how this does. I f uh, my gut feeling is it's another zero three. Actually, I've just got to make one little change. Just excuse me for a second. Yep, and I'm back again. I just had to change the name to something because I realised I dropped the furnace uh, card from the deck. So there's no, there's, there was no furnace. Um, yeah, we'll we'll try this out. Probably, almost certainly a zero three. I would say, very weird draft. Very very quite a challenging draft, I think. But um, it's it's playable. I'll I'll give it that. I just don't think it's it's probably not good enough. Let's add that to decks and play. Just rip the bandage off, rip the plaster off, just get these games out of the way because I don't I do not have high hopes. Okay, three land, that's good. Turn two duelist. Uh probably nothing on turn three. I'm actually going first, which is amazing. Uh, I think my last 10 games, I've gone first once, which uh, is very interesting. I'm going to keep that hand. He has mulligans. Ooh, nice three drop. Very nice three drop indeed. We could either play that if he's if he's got something, or get out a flesh cutter, I suppose. That's I reckon that's a reasonable target. Yeah, I think we can annex sentry that. Oh, he's got the drowning nicker. Fair enough. Uh, we've actually got five mana, and that's important. That means I can play and equip flesh cutter next turn. You need two white to do that as well. I should mention. Uh, if I didn't draw a land, I was going to play the rib skiff to just draw an extra card. But this means I can play a volshock spitter this turn. Obviously, I cannot attack, and 
No attacks. So this is this equipment card costs three to equip as well. I should mention. So that's another another. Th um, probably gonna. I'm probably gonna equip the flesh cutter to the duelist. Nice little two point drain life. This thing does. Oh, edict. Nasty. Right. He's had a lot of removal. <laughs> He's had almost as much removal as I've had creatures. Which is fair enough. Uh, Okie doke. I guess we... Uh, play a flesh cutter. Equip it. Terramorphic Expanse. We'll see if he's got a third color. No. Thrumming Bird. He needs to get the poison going on my side of the board, though. Right. It looks like a, uh, a Urabrask is on the cards here. Um, yeah, let's go for Ura. He could have a counter spell. I don't think we can worry about that. Uh, just thinking, do I attack with a Might as well? Gives him a nice block. I'm going to attack with a Might as well, because it means letting 10 damage through. Gets, ooh, Mesmerizing Dose, he gets a nice removal spell. But I'll still draw an extra card off Urabrask, which is nice. Oh, he gets a two... That's, of course, has a cheeky little proliferate on there. And that has a proliferate. Oh, yes, I forgot about that. Right, we get a mountain. Okay. Okay, let's count our mana. We've got seven mana. Because I'm thinking I want to re-equip a... Let me let me click on a flesh cutter, please. Flesh cutter. Equip onto that bad boy. And then swing in with these two. Seven damage. He's obviously gaining two life a turn. I will play shall I play a rib skiff, draw an extra card? I suppose the nice thing about equipment, you can use this to crew, then move the equipment. We actually got a win with the deck. He did have to mulligan, and I did get to go first, which is a rare treat. Okay, let's just check everything is working. Yes, good. And we drew our overpowered rare as well. So everything just lined up very nicely that game. I even, of course, I top decked um, the Annex Sentry. Okay, we've got a two drop. We've got a three drop removal spell if he has a one toughness creature. Uh, this could actually. So opponent goes first. I'm going second this game, so. That is less good. We might be able to play a four drop on turn three because we've got the um, the convert. Assuming the red deck does not blow it up. Interesting. He didn't play anything. Could be holding a removal spell. We'll we'll just have to play a convert and hope. I mean, we could play a skull bomb next turn if we can't do anything else. It's the Sprinter. Ooh. Difficult decision. So, 
yeah, I don't get to do anything next turn if I block. I think I'm going to do no blocks because he's going to have to play this again at some point. I'm, of course, I'm thinking of paying another two life. Um, I've actually drawn a three drop, which means I don't have to pay two life. I can just swing in. Um, this is... Hmm. We could also play a 2-4 creature. I think... I like the Furnace Punisher. And I like swinging in for 2. I'll probably just tank 3 more damage. That ha that goes back to his hand. So I'm so I feel like I'm winning maybe on tempo. I just hope he doesn't have a big oil payoff that this is going to be useful for. But it's, it is another red white deck. Not many oil payoffs in uh, in white. And the other thing is, um, we kind of need to draw a fourth land. That would be nice. Uh, we're not blocking. Is that getting blown up? So I'm hoping it's difficult for him next turn to play removal spell plus sprinter. Fantastic. We do not have to sacrifice two life points. Um, I don't think there's anything we want to play pre-combat, so we'll just swing in. And the reason, yeah, the removal thing is relevant, I want to play a defensive creature to just stop his sprinter. So I'm going to play the Orthodoxy Enforcer. He could literally have uh, Ossification, or the um, Planar Disruption, and the land, and play the sprinter, and then he'd get through. What instance? Oh, he's got, ah, Volt Charge does three, you see. So he did wait a while. And then he took that out. Just to see if I had anything more threatening. Basilica Shepherd. Oh, we got a hazardous blast, so we can take out his mites and swing in for four if we want. Um Alternatively, we could play Hexgold Hoverwing, so that would actually be a blocker for his Shepherd, and this can swing in as a 4-4 four, four Vigilance, which is which seems quite good. I think that's that's the that's the way we want to go. Not actually played with this card before. I think it's it's all right. This is obviously a game where I found the artifacts, so it does it, it feels a bit better. I think life is going to be pretty. It's going to be a, a tight game, so I don't. I don't really want to spend two life to play a skull bomb here. Okay, that's getting the planar disruption. Sure enough, he did have planar disruption. Um, that in okay, that's losing flying. Fair enough. So he's uh, so that's getting through. Basically, he's not attacking. Um, I can charge the mites and take out his flyer here. 
and what then? Then I can just play a Skull Bomb. Um, as this blast isn't, it takes out the mites, I suppose. Uh, if I swing in, the mites kind of get to swing back. It doesn't feel so good. And I could just build up the board, have a Volshock Splitter. And then it's getting pr quite close to lethal, isn't it? Um, if you can't deal with a Volshock Splitter. We'll do that, and we'll play a Skull Bomb. Uh, let's say next. And no attacks. And turn. You'll remember we've also got we do have six mana, we can still tap this for mana. If we top deck a land next turn it means we can actually cast both of these. Here comes the Sprinter. Okay, two oil counters. So, um, also, Spell Bomb, that's a three mana activation. Uh, adds, adding two damage to the board. Now I can trade off, but it um, it feels less ambitious to trade off, because I could go for the win next turn. I don't think I'm in danger next turn, so I'm going to not block that guy. Uh, I'm just going to actually... If he's got two mana available, right? What are the what are his options? I do have a little notepad file. Um, oh, he's doing something to me. Okay, playing our disruption on that guy. Damn. Damn. That is annoying. <laughs> um, he is tapped out though. Okay, my turn. Okay. So, yeah, re equipping this is uh, three mana, isn't it? If we can find it. This draws a card, right? I think this is a good option because this can draw me into a, another land and then I won't have to spend life. I don't really want to do the Hazardous Blast yet. We'll cast that on a 2-2. Two, two. Okay. Could pay two life and charge of the mites that and swing for four. Um, yes. Uh, wait. Oh, planar disruption he cast on the equipment and not the creature. Oh, could I have got a win there? Maybe. I just realized that. Can he go for the win here? Well, he's got five damage. He could have pump spell, pump spell and win. Maybe I shouldn't have attacked with both of them. Okay, that's not adding power to the board. Uh, um, I mean, he's not. Uh, he can't re-equip that and add damage. 
And then we've still got the Hazardous Blast. He is going for five damage. Okay, fair. Sprint is bouncing back. He could literally have Hex Gold Slash, Hex Gold Slash to take out my attackers. Um, but he can't stop me a convert. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. Okay, so I think let's. I don't think. Yeah, let's just Hazardous Blast, and that probably gives us the win. There's a Vault Charge that kills one of them. But it's not enough. Interesting. But isn't that funny? Yeah, if you put Planar Disruption on the equipment, you do not stop the, the token creature. So I think we benefited from a misclick there. Well, this is... Uh, way ahead of my uh, expectations so far, so I'm very happy. Uh, this hand's a little bit iffy, isn't it? We've managed to draw three four drops. We do have three land. This is just an equipment. I get to go first. Um, but it's it's a bad hand, but I hate to mulligan. I always think it can always get worse. I could draw a zero land hand. Um, I think maybe I can get away with this hand because I'm going first. As long as he doesn't go one drop, two drop, three drop, maybe I'm okay. And maybe he's using lots of one toughness creatures and I can sweep the board with this. So. So we'll see. Okay, it's not a one drop, but he is getting the land of his choice. Wow. Brilliant. We top deck a two drop. It's going to find us the fourth land. Wonderful. Right. So we'll, we will totally go for a planes here. So we can kind of lock in turn four. Tap land. But he does have a one a one drop. Okay. Uh, we'll we'll swing in. See if he wants to trade. No, he's letting that through, and we'll play the flesh cutter. But he's surely got a three drop here, I would guess. Black mana, mere convert. Oh, it's a two drop. Okay. And it's actually susceptible to Hazardous Blast. I think it would be feels wrong to go for Hazardous Blast right now. Um So I think I just swing in with a Dune Mover because I don't mind trading off. Good, and I, I prefer that trade. Has he got a combat trick though? Oh, he's got the combat trick. Gives him one extra toughness. Got me good there. Alright, we'll play a hex gold hover wings. So 
So my instinct is build up the board and then play... Oh, God almighty. So he's able to play a Mondrak. Um, which means... He gets um, double tokens. Has to sacrifice two other artifacts to make it indestructible, though. Um, if I do ch trade here, I've still got the hex gold hover wings. I think, um, yeah, it takes an artifact off the board. So he's got to play another... Yeah, I think I have to take that trade. It is not looking good right now, but... Um, at least we've still got an ace in the hole. Uh, we'll go for a Volshock Splitter now. It's looking like he missed a land drop. And he's got lots of removal, it looks like. Oh, a Malkator. So it makes two three threes because he's got Mondrak, of course. That lovely little combination of rares doing the job for him. I feel like I'd have really slowed him down if I'd killed that with Hazardous Blast. Right. Um, let's think about just hitting him for lots of damage. Three. Yeah. Okay. Equip, equip, um, seven damage and get a, a thingy. He's going to hit me for 11 damage this turn, or 13 damage even. Yeah, actually, other option, has this blast blazing crescendo, that's eight damage. And it takes out these dudes. Okay, what about let's let's blazing crescendo this guy. Let's see what what card we exile. Okay, it's a planes, so I can play a planes and a hazardous blast. Because at least we're killing two things. Potentially slowing him down if he's got more four drops, and we're swinging for eight damage. Seems like a good turn. And then we've, we're threatening lethal next turn if we just equip our stuff. But it's it's a more obvious turn because it's playing all the cards in my hand rather than playing what he can see on the board. But I think it feels necessary to slow him down a bit. He just needs a removal spell. He's found the removal spell, so he wins, I think. He's had removal for all of my creatures. If they can do that, they, they tend to win. I mean, this was also upgraded to removal. He's got that to stop a haster, which makes sense. Okay, Skull Bomb is sacrificed. If they can hit, in fact, if they can get removal for all your creatures and play two overpowered rares, uh, yes, that, that they are going to win. Charge of the Mites. Does zero damage. Let's see, he's, he's got ten damage, potentially. But if I can get through with a Might next turn, I can win. So that's uh, it's still it's still interesting. He might he might have he just needs a two point pump spell to win. Don't know. Have I miscalculated this? So uh, all of these equips cost three, so I can't play this now and equip something. So yeah. 
I'll have to do that. Do that end of his turn. So it's a surprise. I've got to use the right mode of the card as well. So, seven damage. I wonder if he has instant removal to just stop both of my mites. I wouldn't put it past him. Uh, and can we even do six damage? Because that's... Oh, that would be four damage. Right, yeah. Four, five, six. Okay, let's, so let's charge the mites and make two mites. So yeah, he, need, he needs an instant speed removal spell now. Because I can... Oh wait, what am I talking about? I need nine mana to equip everything that I need to equip. That's the problem. Yeah, oh, that's a shame. No, so it's not. it doesn't quite work. I get to do four damage. Damn it. I think it's uh, I think it's good game here. So obviously I need evasion, so we equip this. So it gets to two. Uh, plus two power is good, so we'll apply this. And then we're just one mana short from equipping the last one. Um, uh, yeah, one mana short. Right. Hope I haven't forgotten something important. I wonder if he had the uh, instant removal spell. I was hoping he'd concede there, but I thought I'd just slow play it a little bit, and, and um, yeah, but no. But yeah, uh, good rollout, I guess, yeah. The uh, Zealot's Conviction was the other removal spell, but it's sort of, yeah, he upgraded a combat trick into a removal spell. But yeah, two removal and two bombs, basically. Interesting, yeah, he didn't have bloom... The mid... I didn't know, know, realize how crucial the mere convert was. If I just, if I had blown that up, I'd have just locked into a win because he wouldn't have been able to cast anything. <laughs> um, but yeah, may, maybe I should have considered that. But it seems, it seems like, oh, maybe he's going to cast more one toughness things, and then I can uh, get a two for one. Okay, uh, a couple of two drops. This can destroy an artifact if I sacrifice another creature. Uh, five drop. Okay, we'll we'll keep it. I think we'll just have to go Axiom Engraver first. And I didn't. I've lost track of who was going first there. I suspect it might be me. Yeah. So I'm I'm getting a nice run of actually getting to go first, which is pretty cool. Pretty refreshing. He's got a one drop though. Uh, that's good. We've got a four drop because there's a big gap between two and five. That's nice. Graver potentially that could. If I get too much land, that could discard a land. Okay, another nice four drop. 
So I don't I don't really want to discard a card here. I like all of these cards. I need this land as well. You could if you're greedy you could go right, actually I don't I think I want to discard the slinger and get a three drop, but uh, nah. Let's decline that. Okay, rat is coming in. Try and trade off. Is he going to use a combat trick here? Yes, he is. Whisper of the Dross. Gets me good. Another rat. Okay. And the problem I have here, I might not hit five land. I'm tempted to discard the splitter here. That was the slightly less good um, four drop. Because I really want to... Uh, yeah, okay, I think... I want to absolutely maximize my chances of hitting land number five. So I'm going to discard the splitter. Seems crazy, but I think it might be the right play. Interesting. Um, so arguably, we can go Gold Warden Helm. Uh, no, no. We've got to go Hex Gold Hover Wings. And then we have to discard... Cacophony Scamp to try and draw land number uh, no, land number five. As nice as Cacophony Scamp is. Because it can actually trade with the rat, couldn't it? It can block and then ping the rat. Just thinking, do I want to trade off with a rat here? Yeah, I'm just definitely getting, I feel like I'm getting hammered. He's going to be winning the race. Uh, so I'm going to go for it. Seems crazy again, but I'm okay with it because I, I get to keep the hover wings. That's the important thing. The proliferate trigger isn't that threatening at this stage. It's less power on the board to block my Urubrask, so uh, I'm going to use the last token here to discard the scamp. Come on, let's hit that fifth land. No, we didn't do it. This, These are both card draw things, though. Um, yeah, this is, a, yeah, we could equip for three, swing for two damage. I don't really want to do that. I want to play Gold Warden's Helm. And Basilica Skull Bomb. So I'm not actually, I still have to draw a land to, um, to play Urubrask next turn. But this felt like the right play to make. The deck, my opponent's deck feels quite low to the ground so far. Maybe he's got a big surprise later, but if I can just um, field his creatures Oh, interesting. That gets the canopy. Yep. 
beautiful. We actually top deck a land. He's got two black up. Um, I'm not corrupted, so Anoint with Affliction will not kill Urubrask. So let's go for it. What am I forgetting? Sacrifice. There's instant sacrifice cards. Oh, he has three mana up, so... Well, he could have Titanic Growth, couldn't he? But uh, I'll attack with both of these, actually. Oh yeah, that's true. You can double block like that. So I'll try and kill that rat. Let's see. I was hoping for something double green that he couldn't cast. But yeah, he's got a, a mana fixer. Does he need a forest? I'm, I'm assuming it might be a Tyranax atrocity. In his hand. Oh, he, di he didn't do anything. Okay. What did we get? Okay, Annex Sentry and. I can only play it this turn, so I just had to reread re that. So, what will we take out here? I feel like taking out the Cultivator. It might delay a 6-drop creature, or a double green creature. And um, we can Blazing Crescendo as well, if we want. Let's attack with both of these. And end the turn. Gets a swamp off the top. One card left. So, what can you do for six mana? There is the Black Sun's Twilight. You could kill Urubrask and bring back a creature. Like a, well, a Blight Belly, Blight Belly Rat, for example. That Emergence. Interesting. Yeah, you can play that. Uh, you can kill an artifact. Okay. You can kill Annex Sentry. So, he ends, uh, yeah, and at the end of the day, he gets a um, chomp blocker, basically. Right, uh, my turn. So, okay, yep, yeah, that's fine. Play that. Uh, right, I think... No, let's hold back the Blazing Crescendo. Let's... Uh, actually, no, yeah, because of the mana, we, wanna, we do want to play that plus a splitter. Right. He's going to block there. We'll crescendo here. For f three extra damage. And we'll play the splitter. Nine damage. Plus this is lethal next turn. Now what's he top decked? The swamp. Yeah. Alright, this is working okay. I think it does help... Of course, drawing Urabrask. Pretty powerful card. We actually make it to 50 50.
And I think, yeah, those that decision to discard a couple of cards early to try and hit f land number five seemed to make sense. Now I'm going first, and I get a slightly dodgier hand. It's two, two lander. Ach we've got a chance of fixing it with Axiom Engraver. Discarding and drawing. So maybe discarding Hazardous Blast. We probably want to keep Urobrask. Maybe discard Orthodoxy Enforcer. I've got Blazing Crescendo to exile a card as well. Um, if they blow up Axiom Engraver, I'm in trouble. Which is probably where I ought to mulligan. But if I've got anything that draws cards, I feel like you can wriggle your way out of it. Just check the that thing. Yeah, everything seems to be fine. Okay, play a mountain. Boom. Oh, good. Strong start. Yeah. Oh, now a mere convert is definitely interesting. And it means I could play a four drop next turn. If I top deck a land. Um, but I have to top deck a land. And I don't have any three drops. I think I've got to play the engraver. I think that's still the right choice. And the ones we discard, I think, first hazardous blast. We could, we could use blazing crescendo, I suppose. If, that, if that's getting killed, that might be in a lot of trouble. It is a land. It's not quite the right land. But we can play this guy. Okay, two, three. Right, I think Hazardous Blast goes. He doesn't have any one toughness creatures. Dune move is a good draw. Okay, we, we find a fourth land, we can play Urubrask. Right, for two life points. Seems good. He might whiff his uh, top decks a little bit here, if I'm lucky. If he doesn't have enough land. Oh, it's well, it's a combat trick, so he just has to use that this turn. So that's that's quite good. Uh, I obviously I can exile a white card off the top quite easily and uh, be in trouble. Ah, he's got planar disruption. Uh, so his triggered ability is still going to work. I'm still sort of going to get two cards a turn. Yeah, three damage. I think I've got to just drop the orthodoxy enforcer just to maximize my chances of being able to do something next turn it's another gold warden cell but we get there we got to the planes you see it's very important to discard that card so we could actually get there um we play this boy um and we'll play june mover do we want to find another planes because I 
I'm a bit more comfortable having two planes. It seems crazy because I've, I've hit five land, but there is a double white card in the deck. Um, right, yep, yeah, I can't can't do anything with that lot. He's got one card left. We saw one of his um, combat tricks went away. Okay. Um, right. This is the Met. Right. We've got two, three, two, one, two, three, two, one. Um, we just sort of hope he doesn't have plated onslaught, which makes everything a four, four. Can he cast plated onslaught for three? He's got one, two, three artifacts. If it's literally a plated onslaught, I will be absolutely obliterated here. Uh, so that me well, it's simple, isn't it? It means I can't take that risk. So I've got to go right. You block him, and you block him. That's four damage. And we'll let the rest through. Okay. Oh, we yeah, of course we got the planes. We've got another planes. That's fine. Uh, we have a blazing crescendo combat trick. So, but we are we're getting beaten up here. Uh, I've got to play a Gold Warden's Helm. I don't want to use Blazing Crescendo on the offense. Uh, it's till end of my next turn I can play that card. So I can, I can play everything in the deck. I don't really have an effective breakthrough here in the turn. He's just going to chip away with this guy, I guess. Oh, against all odds, so he gets a token. It gets two creatures black. Uh, so that's that's nice. But he doesn't have any... We know he doesn't have any combat tricks here. Gets his nice menace creature back. Okay, that's... Yeah, I mean he's got so many defenders now. Okay, another planes. Sure thing. Okay, we get a jawbone duelist. Very interesting. There's no way we can attack. We just go next. Uh, no attacks. End turn. Orthodoxy Enforcer. So it's only Urubrask has only punished him once and taken away one card. But I'm I'm drawing two a turn, so that's that's pretty good. I should eventually overwhelm him with card advantage. Hopefully before the nine turns are up. Okay, we're getting through that land. I'm playing a splitter. Uh, right, of course you can re-equip a splitter onto the duelist. I think I want him to attack me. Uh, or I could just attack with the duelist. Um, Let's let's be brave. Let's attack with a duelist. Actually, no, it's not. It's obviously t completely telegraphing the fact that I've got a combat trick. So we've got to equip our splitter next turn, 
on the duelist if he if he's just gonna win with this and do nothing else. Very nice seeing exactly what he's drawing for the rest of the game. Okay, we've got seven more turns, right? Um, my turn. Ooh, beautiful and against all odds. Right. Uh, right, splitter, and bring back a three drop. We've only got a June mover, but well, that's okay. Wait. XL Urbras can bring it back. It'll lose. Does it lose planar disruption when we do that? Uh, I wish I yeah I should really learn the rules of magic. Um, I think yeah I think it does work. Uh, thing is, well we're gonna learn today, aren't we? Decline that, please. Uh, we're going to equip that onto a splitter. Uh, it's just suicide, actually, for Urabrask to attack. <laughs> so I'm not sure why I did that. Uh, but I will attack with this guy. Um... Do get that up to six. That's twelve damage. So that that gets things a bit closer. We're not gonna use that, of course, that would be silly. And we do have a removal spell. We could take out his flyer. Oh yeah, okay, he can do that, of course. That does make sense. He can just attack with everything. He got a blazing crescendo, so he's got three damage somewhere. Three extra damage, and one extra toughness. Um, so the game here is block everything. Block every single thing. You block him. Um, engraver, you block him with a 2-2. Two -two. Uh, I guess Urabrask blocks you. Um, you're going to block there. Wait, I'm confused about what is not blocked. Um, you're going to block there. And I guess you're going to block there. And uh, it's not a great set of blocks, is it? Wait. You're going to block there. And uh, boom. So we make sure the orthodoxy enforcer dies. That's the main thing. That's going to do four damage. Oh, he didn't kill Urabrask. He knows I've got charge of the mites. Yeah, worth a shot. Worth a shot. But yeah, the turn four Urabrask. Yeah, that it did it. It only cost him one card, but of course it, it earned me loads of extra cards. It's the problem if you've only got planar disruption as removal for him. Uh, I wasn't sure about exiling Urabras because he's doing a fine job um, just getting me an extra card every turn. Probably better off just making another 2-2 token. Don't want to risk Urabrask uh, 
in the front lines. Okay, this is interesting. All red, all red hand, and it's a one, two, three. So I think we keep this. And we just hope we don't draw all white cards that we can't cast. Interesting. It's, it's the combo as well. If he plays a one drop, ho ho! Okay, so here's the deal. Um, I'm going to attack you with a cacophony scamp. Uh, yeah. Blow that up. And we just play this on curve. It's just a grizzly bear. Oh, and I nearly made a mistake. This only blows up artifacts. I always forget that. That, that would be amazing if it blew up creatures as well. Yeah, okay, there's the first thing we can't cast. But never mind. Oh, counter spell. I forgot they existed. Yes, that would be a very good thing to do. Three colors. Very ambitious, but it's sort of, it's worked out. He's got his has worked out for him. So we think we're thinking another counter spell might be the thing here. Okay, heavy removal is what I've noticed. Um, I'm going to go actually for the splitter because it's more damage. Does he have removal? Does he have a creature? Kato dancing shadow, and he can stop a creature from attacking or blocking. That's yeah, that that works. Uh, I can play this. So, control deck. It's fair to say. Another land. He's got three things left. And I'm kind of out of stuff. And this is going to draw cards. If he can attack with the creature, deal combat damage, bounce it back, the creature back to his hand, he can do another thing. He can make two, two death touches as well for two loyalty. Which, of course, I can fly over, so they might not be as useful for him. And because I can reattach the Hex Gold Hover Wings, it does cause him a bit of a problem. Let's see what he's doing. Okay, right, yeah, that gets... that's proliferating. That's getting, getting him another loyalty token. Look through the top three. Just needs to kill one of my things, I suppose. And then he's fine. Shoulders eat it. Okay, there we go. That's that did it. We'll lose this one. And then this one will be pacifismed by the planeswalker and unable to attack. Oh, that helps. Okay, so five mana. It'd be nice if we had enough mana to attach something. But yeah, getting this asshole down to one loyalty is going to help a bit. And then he, he won't be able to... Sorry, two loyalty. So uh, do I need to... Yeah, yeah, I just play a mountain because I don't think it matters if I'm tapped out. And we we have a mana intensive deck here. Proliferate, so he's going to get to three. He can only pacifism one thing. I think it means we're going to hopefully see the back of Kato very shortly. Guy has taken us, taken us up to three poison. That did get him to three loyalty. Let's show these scrap heads what real tech can do. Okay, right. That's pretty nice. Okay, he didn't uh incidentally 
knock out any of my things. Uh, just hover wings on Urabrask. Okay, wait, that's... Mm, okay. At the moment, it's looking like... Do we... Tr we we want to preserve Urabrask as long as possible, because he's very powerful. Um, I could just sentry and kill this annoying Death Toucher. And then really regret my choices when he gets something much more threatening. He's also playing black, so he could make me discard a card at some point. So I'm just going to attack that. These don't have reach, right? Good. Kato is gone. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and play this and possibly regret it. Get rid of the, uh, the Death Toucher. So two unknown cards in his hand. He needs removal for Urubrask. And that gets me to uh, four poison. Ooh, okay, yes. Infested flesh cutter, please. Player planes. Interesting thing because we've got the hover wings. This will actually boost this to four power. So I think I think that is a good move. Get in there with the annex sentry, I believe. Um, but we won't touch Urabrask. Okay, it's blocking, so I get to five poison. Fair enough. And end the turn there. Oh, font of progress, so he can mill me based on the number of oil counters that has. So, mills for two a turn. Not too scary yet. But it's a sort of all-in proliferate deck. What's the chances he has titanic growth in his deck? Because I'm thinking, if I swing in with Urabrask, that's literally what he needs. Or the, uh, the black combat trick. I'll be very gutted if that's his last card. Oh, he's got Fat Emergence. Okay, cool. That's his last card. That's probably not too bad. And he takes out the token creature. Okay. And he's only got three power on board here. So we'll play our Skull Bomb. Um, this can get to five power with a with one of those. I've got six mana. So I want to equip Urabrask. I think the convert is Good target for that. Uh, Urabrask is maybe a good target for the splitter. Because then it's 6. He's 7, 4. And he's just going to kill anything that tries to block him. Um... I think attack with a might, because he's well advised to block the main dudes. So, yeah, three with seven damage. I'll, I'll accept that result. So what's this card? It's a swamp. That's oil three, by the way. It's, uh, it is starting to do stuff. All right, good game. Yeah, Urubrask is pretty overpowered against uh, control decks, I would say. That was a very lucky, very fortunate 
top deck to play that, to get that when his sort of shields were down and I could get in to his planeswalker. Hot shot mechanic. Wow, we've got to five wins. A uh, very unlikely deck to, to reach five wins, I would say. Okay, well, it is all three drops. I am getting to go first, which is amazingly lucky. So uh, I will keep that. But it's a, it's a pretty good three drop. It's a three, three for three. Notice that power and toughness uh, seems quite important in this game. So just, just having something big and tough can really make the difference. And we can, we can play a skull bomb, I guess. So it's better than nothing. Uh, probably completely forget about this ability, so you can sack an artifact and add red mana. Oh, now that's a good answer to what I was, what I was thinking about doing. Right, so uh, things change. Uh, obviously, I don't want to trade a 3-3 for a 3-1, so I'm going to annex sentry that immediately. And then see if um, he has removal, I suppose. A death toucher, yeah. I'll do it. So, yeah, I suspect we we just want to trade slow bad off for the death toucher. And we'll see if he's got the fight spell to kill the sentry. That's. I sort of half expect that now. So, totally fine. I'm trying to block like this. I'll see if he's got Titanic Growth or something. That's a fine trade to me. It takes a death toucher off the board. I'm expecting the four mana creature. Oh, it's the uh, okay. He's got got the brutalizer. That's yeah, that's pretty powerful. Right. Um. I think we just. We'd really like to hit land number five, so I'm going to sacrifice my Skull Bomb for a card. Hit the land, that's very good. Okay, we uh, want to Gold Warden's Helm, I think. It's going to be pretty risky blocking with a sentry, but potentially, if he, does, if he doesn't have a combat trick to answer. Obviously if I attack that reveals that I've got a combat trick. So this would get to 5-4 so it would still be a trade if we... oh! Okay, very happy to see a Tyranax atrocity. Delighted. <laughs> uh, because at least I can block and win one of these fights. Yeah, they're both the same, aren't they? T they're both toxic 3 4 for us. So 
So yeah, block like that. But yeah, we let the other one through. Usually they've got two more Tyranax Atrocities on the way. Well, usually at least one more. The last deck I played, he had Tyranax Atrocity and then he he had the um, the three mana 4-4 four, four as well. Oh, don't play that land, play the mountain. Yes. Okay. So, so far, Charge of the Mites does two damage. If we... Yeah, I think we might want to equip... This is only a two mana to equip and we've got six mana. So we can play a Rib Skiff. And that's a 4-4 four, four we can block with, which is quite cool. And we don't want to play the Duelist, we want to re-equip this, so we've got a 1-5 a creature. So we've got, we've, got, we've got two blocking options here. The less risky risky one is the rib skiff. That's this is always vehicles are always kind of expendable. Uh, target creature or planeswalker. Okay, let's resolve that first. See, as he's targeting something, then we will crew this. Like so, he'll get his three one back. Please attack the Brutalizer. I would love to trade off my Ribskiff. But it wasn't a second Tyranax atrocity to follow up with. He's got Planar Disruption for that. Of course he does. He does two removal spells for both my blocking options. As well as the big creatures. Because, of course, they have everything. Everything at all times. Um, yeah. So, Jawbone Duelist, I'm thinking, does two damage, doesn't it? Let's play that. We can play... An, can we crew this... Is crewing an activated ability? I'm just going to click on it. No, we can't crew it because we could get to four creatures and um, yeah, and do that, which would be pretty amazing. Um. Oh well, I think we we got to play Axiom Engraver. I don't think adding an extra point of toughness to something actually makes any difference here. So I play this guy. I mean, he could be a 1-4, couldn't he? Um, no attacks, and enter. We could try, just say, right, I'll trade these two for the Brutalizer and Engraver for the Stalker. Keep charge of the mites sort of in the back pocket in case he tries anything. But if he's literally got the plus four, plus four now, um, and they, as we know, these guys have everything big creatures, removal, and combat tricks just when they need them. If, yeah, if he's got exactly the plus four, plus four, we lose. But, if I block this with everything, I've actually got six toughness of creature. And I'll, I will do seven damage. No, four. Damn. So, eight. I will do eight damage. So, we've got to play around Titanic Growth like that. If he's got the one that gives it invulnerable, then, then we've... Uh, 
we've had a bad one. But then, what can you do? He's literally had the perfect set of cards every single time. Okay, uh, before first strike damage, we could do three damage to this guy. Let's 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 try it. We got away with it. He did not have the combat trick. There is a turn up for the books. Wow. So this thing, uh, he needs two artifacts. There was absolutely no sign of any artifacts in his deck. If he can get this to 4-4, four, four, I'm not going to be happy. Um, but I'm think, I think we want this guy to be a 1-4. And then, oh, we want to obviously discard the mountain. So no attacks, end turn. Well, that's a... I feel like that's the first time I've survived this uh, brutalizer atrocity kind of onslaught. In the past, they've always had two atrocities, though. Okay, let's see what, what he's going to attack with. I will just, I'll just block with this, because I'm, I'm willing to trade it off for a combat trick. Oh, he, now, see, he drew the Tyvar stand, one, it was in the deck, he drew it one turn late. Ah, well. So that will kill my engraver. We, what we can do is discard a mountain. Draw a card, at least. No damage goes through. Could be worse. Then a Gold Warden's Helm, okay. So he's got <laughs> he's got the first artifact. He's gonna find the two artifacts as well, isn't he? Um I mean this thing is just gonna die to most things. I think we'll just equip this here so it can have three toughness. That seems to make sense. I can't complain. I've had great luck in my pr earlier games getting Urabrask every single game. This one's a little bit more challenging. He's got one card left. Oh! Good point. You can definitely do that. Yeah. Um, so then the duelist kind of has to trade off here. And that has to stop that damage coming in. I think. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Been through nine lands. Ooh, ten lands actually. We've got seven left in the deck. So it is two thirds cards. He's been through, looks like six lands. Yeah. Yeah, I've got two more lands in play. Uh, so he should have 11 lands left, so it's almost half lands he's got left in the deck. Do we have two artifacts in play? Yes. So we, we have a real orthodoxy enforcer. Um, I could equip that on there, but I'm not going to.
Imagine if he'd held on to that Tyvar stand. Okay, yeah, that's now a 2-5, so he can block my Enforcer. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. So I think... Uh, I think we go on the offensive here. I think we start attacking. Hope he doesn't have another combat trick. Just attack with both, because that sort of makes sense to me. Okay, that's getting blocked by those two, or just by him. Okay. That's getting blocked by both. That's that's the combination, isn't it? That's what I missed. It's a pretty cheap way to lose my orthodoxy enforcer. Yeah, that was a that was a misplay. But he's also hoping I don't have a combat trick. So it's just a bit of a gamble that's uh, not paid off there. But finally, finally, we find Urabrask. Okay, so let's. Um, it doesn't. It does. He just doesn't get through, unfortunately. Um, but what does happen? Yeah, I think the chance. It, if he has a combat trick, I mean, I can get through with two damage. Then he hits me back for two damage. I think I'll play a land. I won't do anything. And I'll try and um, make the most of Urabrask. Because there's no point pushing through for two damage when he's going to hit me back for two. And I'm on lower life. Does he have the removal spell he needs? Now I'm potentially drawing two a turn. There's a Cacophony Scamp. Okay. Um, and we'll have one of you guys as well. Um, and it's still not very good to attack, so I won't do that. But it's amazing how a 2-5 can just hold off your team forever. And I'm going to run out of cards in 8 turns as well. Worth mentioning. Hex gold hover wings. Well, there you go. That's evasion. That is something we need. Uh, interesting thing we can do. If we pop it on the scamp. It just gets to 2 1, doesn't it? You don't have any power boosting equipment. Um, we have a 3 3 on the ground as well, which is interesting. I think, yeah, we just pop that on Urabrask and swing in. It's a three-turn clock. Probably a two-turn clock, because we've got the preponderance of creatures. Yep, sacrifice that to get another card. He's attacking. Very interesting. Okay. Uh, we're thinking... This is looking like another combat trick. Quite probably. Um, which way do we want to do it? Well, we're going to do it that way. And if he's got plated onslaught, I think it's really bad. But I still get to kill one of them with a cacophony scamp point of damage. Good, he didn't have it, so point of damage to the face, please. It's a 3-1, okay. That's threatening. So 
three, two. Ooh, plated onslaught. Uh, right, against all odds, um, we want to bring back a three drop. The best three drop is. Is it slow bad or is it a jawbone duelist? When the jawbone duelist can benefit from a plated onslaught. It's the jawbone duelist actually. Oh, the rib skiff can come back and give draw me another card. That would be nice. Beautiful. Um, let's play a mountain. Um, let's play a Gold Warden's Helm. Uh, am I missing something? Can I win here? No, I don't think so. We can hold that for next turn. I think I can put the helm on you. That makes a lot of sense. And then end, to end the turn there. What did he get? He got an against all odds as well. Which can bring back... Uh, it's a creature you can bring back. You can bring back a Vorak. Or Icus Basilisk. We got him! We got him! That was nice. Yeah, that's uh, that's the terrifying sort of big green rollout that I have succumbed to in quite recent games. And uh, we, we managed to stabilize. It was maybe one big creature short because it was uh, one Brutalizer and one, um, one T-Rex. Okay, six wins. I, I didn't expect to get this far. Anything more is a bonus. And I, I, that draft was, it just felt terrible because I took that, um, the black removal card and Night with Affliction. And then I went into white because I saw the, uh, the double striker followed by the Annex Sentry, which seemed good. But I was thinking, oh, I, I should have stuck to my guns and gone black. I need these two black removal spells. But uh, it's turned out okay. Yeah, the um, the double striker has been pretty good here. Even though I'm not a poison deck. Okay, we're on the draw. Uh, we get, get a two drop, we get a four drop. I think that's okay. We draw a fourth land, that is good. Two two rat. We will meet that with a two two shrapnel slinger. Try not to sacrifice it. Decline, please. Looks like we do nothing on turn three though. Oh, he got me, and we're at two poison. Cool. We draw. We draw something we can play that can trade with a rat. We're happy with that. That'll do. We'll, we will get to Corrupted. Oh, no, we won't. He's going to pump it to four. And we can't block it. Annoying. Right. Well, that's, uh, that's pretty brutal, isn't it? So that's going to be a four-four. It's going to trade off with my Orthodoxy Enforcer. I think it's got to be the Enforcer the Punisher. He actually ki he kills both of these, doesn't he? Um, yeah. Horrendous situation. Wow. So I had a feeling this might be quite a good card. I tried it um, in a draft yesterday. 
but it wasn't as uh, okay. Well, he has removal. He has more removal as well. He had it's the old two removal start with a two drop uh, that can just brutalize you. Okay, six damage. Does this get toxic as well? No. So we're on five. At least he didn't have a follow-up creature as well. I suppose. And we can plate it on slot. He'll only trade off with this or this um, furnace punisher. I think it has to come out here. We have to tank four more damage from the rat, and then we have to try and stabilize. I think the following turn. Oh, um, good point. That's an extra point of mana. Um, let's stop on the upkeep. I'm thinking do it, doing this in the upkeep. No, wait. If he's got a pump spell for this, then it's bad. It's, it's even more damage. I think we do this now. Two damage directly to the rat. Please. I hope he doesn't have instant speed removal. He's already had two removal. Seems greedy to have three. Nice. Okay. Oops. Yeah, he had uh, he had a power pumping thing, so that gets to be six five. Now I've got two chump block. Feel like I made the right decision. Um, he just literally had everything he needed. Ridiculous. Uh, and no nothing with one toughness I can exploit with hazardous blast. Um, He just swings with everything and wins. Uh, I never got plated onslaught out. Um, so I can chump block two things if I play this guy. And I can't play plated onslaught. Otherwise I die. So let's let's chump block two things and see if we get something amazing. Ooh, I forgot again. Can pay two life. Trouble is then we lose. Um, because a, something with two toughness is getting through anyway. We did have a removal card. It was not good enough, unfortunately. It wasn't just about not having removal. His, his white-black deck had a pump spell. <laughs> because of course it did. Okay, six mana to kill that, sure. I will plate it on slot in response. Because I can. Well, this was an absolutely horrible game. Opening hand wasn't wasn't that great, was it? But I don't think it. In my opinion, it's not mulliganable. If you got three land, you've got a two drop. That's good enough, in a lot of draft games. Okay, one more chance. Let's see if we can do it. Okay, one drop, two drop, three drop with four land. Yep, 
that's that's keepable. And I'm on the play, amazingly. So this is probably my record for you know in recent drafts in terms of actually getting to be on the play. Let's see if he's got a burn spell immediately. Oh, that's a Justicia. I am drawing a lot of land, but I'll take out the Justicia. Even though he can't really block that. Now he wants to blow up the sentry, really. Oh my goodness, it's Urabras Forge. So I've got to uh, basically hold this guy back to um, to block every single time. He's going to hit me for two next turn, though. Uh, I'm I like the idea of just getting filling my boots like this right now. And getting him to like five poison. This is only going to do me two damage next turn. And I'm lucky I've got managed to get against all odds as well, which is quite cool. We'll Sinew Dancer, okay. And it's a Volt Charge on the Duelist. Interesting. Okay. And it's actually three damage because it's a Proliferate. A trigger there. Uh, yeah. Okay. We have a target now for against all odds, though. If we... How much do we care about the um, exiling target artifact or creature? We'll get six mana next turn, so potentially we could go June Mover. Um, no, we, uh, it's only Annex Sentry has an interesting come into play effect, right? Uh, so this is going to hit us for four next turn. I think we can. We can do that. I think that's fine. I'm going to go in with Annex Sentry. You can always use this to tap down my my thingy. So I'll go. I'll go with the Orthodoxy Enforcer. Okay, here's a 2 3. There's a 4 1, and I'll just tank it. It is going to be expensive to tap things down with Sinew Dancer, though. Cacophony Scamp. Okay, sixth land. So, against all odds, to. If we, well, if you assume at some point in the future Annex Sentry is going to die. Bounce it, bring it back. Because um, we can take out a, a token creature. Is what I'm thinking. Uh, I think I want to play a June Mover first. And we won't go for the land. I will it means it gives him a justicia which we hope is we hope it's irrelevant at this point and this doesn't make artifacts it's just a phyrexian horror okay it might be the wrong call but I am going to go for it against all odds do both of them we're going to exile the annex entry we're going to bring back a Jawbone Duelist. Uh, 
Um, we can obliterate the Urabras Forge, which is, you know, his main vehicle for winning the game. So I think, yes, let's, let's do that. And let's attack with this guy. 4-4, four, four. he can trade off with these two if he wants, and that's fine. I think I'll kill. The, make sure I kill the Justice Yard. Two cards left. Can pump something's toughness. Can he kill my Annex Sentry? Oh god. Oh god. Wasn't expecting that. Okay, Cacophony Scamp is another creature. Charge of the Mites can do four damage. Um... Interesting thing. Charge of the Mites can do four damage. So he's on six poison. I can actually do attack with and threaten four poison. If he blocks with a finisher, I kill it. But he maybe he'll get the uh, Urabras Forge back. Alternatively, I can charge the mites at the end of his turn. Okay, I like I like this idea. And he could trade one for one there, but uh, we're th we're going to threaten a poison victory. Is he blocking? Brave man. Charge of the Mites does 4 damage to that, and we kill it with First Strike. Right. Those trade off. Gets another poison. Two cards left. He's on seven poison, so I'm threatening a poison win next turn. It's just this year. He can get it to two toughness. And I've got to remember that. Oh, against all odds. Another creature. Another two creatures. That's pretty awesome. Okay. So the problem I have here. Well, let's just think. He can swing back for five, maybe six damage. Yeah. So I'll just, I'll just play Urabrask to see if he concedes. He can block Urabrask with everything. I think Scamp is okay. I think it's okay to attack with this, and I think it's okay to attack with this. Even though he could kill this and get his forge back. I'm not too worried. Okay. Okay. You're down to six life. I will. Which one do I want to kill? I can. I think I kill the Justicia, actually. And he's drawn a mountain. Ok, 
Okay. Uh, oh, we can hazardous blast. Okay, good game. Wow. We actually did it with this deck. So, not sure I've had a trophy deck I've, that I've, where I've predicted a 0-3 for it before. I'd, I'd probably say most decks are 0-3, though. I'm pretty pessimistic when I'm in Platinum. Um, so that is that is a lovely surprise to do well with this one. But, yeah. If you, if you draw your Mythic Rare, it felt like most games, then, yeah, that is going to help a lot and it's just it's a one-way howling mine basically sometimes you just don't want to attack with this guy um and you get to see if your opponent's exhausted their hand you get to see everything they draw as well which is very nice there's a lot of nasty combat tricks in this set um i like the cacophony scamp we wanted to try that out so that's this guy's pretty good because he, he trades with a two toughness creature always and then if we can I never actually got a chance to pump him up but he could um, there was potential there uh, but yeah we did see the jawbone duelist getting pumped up a bit uh, flash cutter I think it was a good good choice bringing the engraver back in I had dropped all the oil cards but I think this is this is just a good discard and draw card to just try and fix fix a few hands that might otherwise not work I don't like braid blazing crescendo but it seemed to make sense because um, you, you do have you can play the card until the end of next turn so as long as I've got five mana it's sort of safe to, safe to play this and I won't lose my Urabrask. Um and that, that was quite good I think uh, that was a good moment where I did it on Annex Sentry to kill a 4-4. Trap Slinger, I don't think that killed anything, but you know, it's a grizzly bear basically, and it's another artifact to help um, help <coughs> my orthodoxy enforcer. <coughs> Mid Convert was pretty good for ramping out stuff. I think we got a turn four Urabrask at least once. Uh, yeah, Annex Sentry, obviously fantastic. Charge of the Mites was pretty good this game. I think we had we had, enough, we had enough creatures. We've actually got quite a few... How many artifact creatures have we got? Um, artifacts that make creatures. We've got the wings, got two helms, we've got two splitters, so actually five. So it's more like 16 creatures plus a vehicle. So it's kind of... It's it's the right... It's still, the, it's still hating the 17 creature kind of guideline. Uh, yeah, F Furnace Punisher and Slow Bird Iron Goblin. So sort of three threes for three. I thought might be might be good. It's a lot. A lot of the time, it just seems to be about stats. Uh, against all odds was fantastic. So this, we got really great value out of this. And I had that decision last game. Should I exile the Annex Sentry? And of course, I've could I completely forgotten this can exile artifacts. As well as creatures, so it could take out the uh, Urabras Forge, which was pretty nice. Uh, Ur Ur it's pretty scary in Urabras Forge with six tokens. I did have the first striker, but he also had a way of tapping down my first striker every turn, so I think that was the good, that seemed like a very good decision. And um, we got the elusive Hex Gold Hover Wings for this deck, getting away of having of um, a, a reusable evasion thing is pretty powerful I would say Orthodoxy Enforcer was good in this deck I think um, probably an underrated card Hazardous Blast I think helped us win one game a couple of games maybe it was it was fine it wasn't so useful for killing one toughness things um, I think may maybe once it was useful for that uh, yeah and there was one game where I one of my losses if I'd used it on turn 4 just to kill the Maya, his my convert, he wouldn't have been able to cast um, the overpowered cards he had in his hand. But uh, yeah. hindsight is twenty twenty. Uh, so yeah, probably with this card, if you can kill a one toughness thing, 
one for one. It's probably not too bad. Um, depending on the thing, if it's, if it's a if it is a mana elf type thing, mana dude might might be quite good. Uh, the splitters were good, so good. It's really nice in this deck to pump power for things like the the scamp and the duelist. Uh, Ribskiff was yeah just okay, and it drew us an extra card in the last game with the against all odds. That's a nice little combo we discovered. Very interesting that somebody, it was threatening enough, somebody used removal on it, used the play and our disruption. Uh, plated Onslaught. I don't think we had a Plated Onslaught win. I don't think, uh, yeah, we may have been about to win with it and then my opponent conceded at one point. And then Urabrask was an all-star in this deck and we just, we kept drawing him. Wasn't really fair on my opponents, especially the control deck, the more controlish decks, where I get to see that every card they draw, and it's sort of it's hitting on turn five when they've used up all their early removal, um, which is quite nice. And it, yeah, it was um, so, yes, and somebody did play our disruption on it again, so it's still a, it's still basically a one-way howling mine. If you do that, it's kind of like. Um, it's a bit like Shieldred in that way. It's uh, got the, the effect is the passive effect is so powerful. You've got to take it off the board with something. And playing sixteen land was just about fine. We just about got away with it with a couple of sort of um, fixes. Yeah. So very very interesting times with this deck. Um, Pleasantly surprised uh, is uh, an understatement. Nice, and that gets us into the 7,000 range with gems. Um, I've got enough gold to do three more of these. I think I, I, think I will. I'll try and f com complete uh, my set of uh, all will be one cards. As, as much as I can before I finally open these packs. I've got I've now got over a hundred packs, which is nice as well. So I should have a should do pretty well with that with that set. Uh, anyway, I think that is the video. So uh, thanks for watching.